So I'm going to show you really quickly how I would buy options in E-Trade. Um, I started out with a Robinhood account, moved to E-Trade, and now I've moved mo most of all of my holdings to, um, to Thinkorswim. Um, I do buy cryptocurrency in Robinhood for right now, but I've heard some good things about Voyager. Um, but this is just a look at E-Trade and how I would go about um, purchasing options. Uh, so first, I typically only buy options in stocks that I'm familiar with um, and that are trending or predicted to trend and trending um, in a particular direction. So, you know, it's upward trending like a stock like NEO or Plug or um, IDEX. You know, these are some stocks that, you know, I'm looking at, but, you know, they're trending in an upward direction and it's pretty consistent. And the sector, you know, is expected to do good things under Biden. So, you know, you want to buy options in stocks that you know the direction the stock is going in because the moves are exponential. You know, if it turns around and goes down on you, it's going to go down in an exponential uh, way. Um, so let me just kind of start walking through it. So uh, here in E-Trade, I would go up here to Options and I'd click on Option Chain. And um, this is an Apple, but let's say you wanted to look at something else. Here's the area to change the symbol. Um, I am actually interested in Plug. So I'm just going to look at Plug for right now. Right now, the option chain is showing both calls and puts. So, you know, there's a lot of information on the screen here. Um, if you have an idea of what you want to buy, then you can just kind of limit that down. So I'm personally looking for calls. And this is only listed to show me seven results, but I'm going to do all just so I can kind of really scroll here. Um, and so these are all doing uh, near, or at least it's listed to start at 63, but because I'm doing all, that doesn't matter. Um, and then here are the dates. So this is this Friday, super risky if you don't hit your target, but if it's going in a direction and you pick the direction correctly, um, you'll do very well because the moves are exponential, you know, for for the, um, the most part during the actual week. Um, so if I was to look at this February 5th, so this is at or near the strike price. Um, and so that means that the current price, you, you know, where this color changes from blue to white, that's just an indicator that um, that is where the stock is currently priced. So right now it's under $64, but above $63. So somewhere within this range is what the actual price of the stock is. And so it's probably 63.17 is probably um, the price. <clears throat> uh, let's see. And we have volume and open interest. Excellent. Um, so if I was to purchase one, I would probably be buying near the strike price. If it's really going in a good direction, if it is going up, you know, I'll start going maybe a little bit further out of the money. If I think, you know, by Friday it could hit $69 and it's, you know, it's trending up. Um, <clears throat> the ones with the most 
volume and open interest are the ones that I target. You know, it says a lot of people are buying at this price. A lot of people are believing it's going to hit that particular target. And a lot of times the bid to ask is more reasonable. And let me explain that really quick. So this is some of the information you have up here. Um, quote details uh, that uh, that's cool um, show some previous information previous movement but so you've got the strike price this is the number that you are betting plug is going to be at or above on Friday um, if it closes below this you lose all of all of your money um, so something uh, to be aware of. Um, the bid, that is what people are offering to pay for it. The ask is what sellers are offering it for. And then the last price, um, that was the last option sold at that particular price. Um, so you always want to look at the bid to ask and you want to make sure that you know, it's close. I like a bid to ask under 5% difference if I'm doing a market buy. You know, market is you're just buying it at the price that the market, you know, is selling it for. You don't want to wait. You just want the option. Uh, the other option, of course, is a limit buy where, you know, you specify the price. So you might do a limit buy of 42.65. You know, you want the lowest price. You don't want to pay you know, more for it, um, but you always want to look at the bid to ask if you're doing a market buy. Well, you want to look at it anyway, but if you're doing a market buy, you know, if you were to look at like a AMC now or, you know, or something like that, um, the bid might be a dollar while the ask is like four dollars. So if you buy it at market, you're going to lose 75% of your money as soon as you bought it for the most part because you paid $4 for it and chances are it's valued at one. So that's, you know, that's something that you definitely want to look out for. That happens a lot in volatile stocks that people are expecting to, you know, move in volatile directions. You know, they put this crazy bid to ask, you know, spread that, you know, can, you know, can eat you alive. And E-Trade doesn't protect you from that. Robinhood, I think, protects its users from getting gouged on, um, you know, crazy bid, bid to ask spreads. So you always want to look at the bid to ask to make sure that, you know, it's not something that is just, is just ridiculous. Like, here, right? As soon as soon as you buy this one, you're probably going to lose 20 25% of, of uh your cash um as soon, as soon as you buy it at market. This one you're losing what? 20% as soon as you buy it. So, um and then this one you lose 30 30% 30 right if you come in and you know <laughs> that's just crazy um, this one you're losing almost 50% of your money so if you come in and you buy this at market price you know it's possible it's possible that you know this could be the value and <laughs> this is your buy. It's saying it last sold at 24, but this is what people are willing to pay for it now. So always look at bid to ask, you know, something reasonable, you know, this is reasonable. Um, the volume is not as high as I'd like. So I would probably be, you know, if I wanted to buy, I'd probably be looking at this one. The bid to ask is a little wide, so I would probably do like a limit buy of 
maybe a dollar and sixty nine if I think it you know it could dip and it's kind of swinging and bouncing like I try to catch it at at a better price. A lot of times it's a good idea to do a limit price lower than the ask, like twenty percent lower, because a lot of times you know options may swing or dip and the value drastically drops. You uh, you get it at a dollar and thirty cents, right? And then it goes back to normal, a dollar and sixty nine, and then you can cash out. The awesome thing is, um, so this one, let's say that 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 this is the one that that I selected, um, right? Um, so let's do trade. I believe that should populate. Cool. So that populated the information for, for me. Um, so we've got the last price of the stock. Cool. So we just have you know some nice, nice, uh, some nice information here. Um, starts populating the details right. I selected a call, um, February fifth. Action. We want to buy open, so we're buying one. Strike price is $70, so I'm betting for it to reach $70. Type is a call. Price type. Um, so that's what I was talking about, market limit. Um, I, d I don't get into trailing stops, but this is some good stuff. Um, you, you know, if you wanted to... Uh, go up and you know if it's trend, trending up you want it to sell as soon as it starts to pull back by a particular dollar amount you know that's you know something good strategy wise if you don't want to watch it but you want it to sell as soon as it starts to lose but you want it to keep going as long as it's you know as long as you know as it's going I typically don't don't get into that because I kind of Monitor my stuff, and I bought and I sell it when I when I want to sell it. Um, uh, let's see, market limit. Um, so, depending on what the bid, so we've got the bid to ask here, right? So I would probably do a limit buy if the current bid is a dollar and sixty nine. Um, I would probably do a limit of like one thirty. If I'm kind of day, day trading in hopes that, you know, it fluctuates down, the value goes down, and then it continues, you know, to go back up if the trend goes up. Because then you catch a nice dip, and then you make money just when it goes back to normal. Um, you know, if you're impatient, you know, you do a market buy, and then you're going to end up buying it probably at around $1.97. But it might be somewhere, you know, in you know, in in between a dollar and ninety seven and a dollar and sixty nine. Um, but personally, I'm I'm doing a limit at a dollar thirty. I'm going to try to catch um, the dip, and then you know, you set the duration. I typically do it a day. I'm you know, I might cha change my mind, you know, at a later time, um, and so. Price wise, it's multiplied by a hundred. You're not buying a hundred shares, you're technically renting a hundred shares for a week, betting that it's going to reach seventy dollars by Friday. Um, you don't have to wait for it to reach seventy dollars. Let's say today is Monday, um, you make the purchase. When the market opens, it's at $64.82, and then it starts trending up, and let's say at the, you know, by 12 o'clock in the afternoon, it's at 66 or 67, right? You probably just made a good amount of money on a weekly option. Um, you know, if you paid $130, I would bet that if this moved from 64 to 67 by, let's say, 10 o'clock in the morning, right? Let's say, let's say 68 by, by 10, by 10 o'clock in the morning. My bet would be that 
you know, $130 would be around $200 maybe, um, you know, within, uh, within a weekly option that, um, that kind of move. Uh, but you could calculate that, um, with, uh, with looking at the Greeks, which, you know, is kind of a lot more detailed, but you can, you know, you can do an option ca calculator, you know, there's, they probably have to have some of those tools on tools online where you can calculate what the, you know, what the move would, would be, you know, in a specific dollar. Um, but that is how I would do it for the most part. Uh, preview the order. Yeah, I've got, you know, I've got in uh, sufficient funds because all of my money is in thinkorswim. So, you know, it's stopping me here. Um, but you would preview the order at that point and then you could kind of push it through. Um, and so you may want to come back in and sell the option, right? Um, you know, so after you bought it, you may want to come, come back in and set a limit sell. So a lot of people, you know, they get greedy. They start seeing, you know, how the percentage is moving up or whatever, whatnot. Um, it's a good idea if you're not just kind of watching the option. Think about what type of gain is comfortable for you and come in and set a uh, sell close on the option that you purchased. You know, if I bought it for $130, i am I'm cool if it reaches two dollars I'm cool and I might do that um, you know if it's until Friday and I know I'm busy as hell uh, like good for 60 days or something so um, if it hits two dollars whatever in value it sells before Friday but um, you're definitely gonna want to probably check on it before Friday um, I don't like to run anything to the expiration date. I sell almost everything, you know, before the expiration date. And I don't choose a weekly option anymore just because of the amount of risk. Um, I have done them in the past and done great and got, got greedy and like lost big. Um, so I prefer a longer runway preferably like three months out so this this gives me like two months out so I would probably be doing like June um, to be safe maybe may, maybe March the 19th if I've you know if I've got a, a lot of faith and the direction you know seems to be really strong because I've got two months for it to basically go in the direction that I want but yeah I would probably to be safe personally like I would be tar you know I would tar target here and uh, you'll notice that the price of the options become more expensive the more time you have because time is like your your tool right time is your gold it's um, your savior the more time you have for things to correct and go in your direction you know and sell out right I wouldn't keep it until June. Like if I made the money I wanted to make by March, by the end of February, like I'd sell it. But this just gives me cushion in case it tanks, COVID-21 happens, or, you know, something crazy. So you want, you want to be able to buy yourself time. Um, you want to give yourself a reasonable strike price. Um, you can go way out of the money and it's more affordable, right? I'm going to switch from calls and puts to just calls here just to clean up my view. There we go. Um, and can I view more than seven? Maybe that. Uh, I can only see seven. Okay. Um, the further out of the strike price or the higher your target, the more affordable the call is going to be. Um, 
calls that are already in the money, right? Like plug is already valued above $58. It's going to be more expensive because chances are um, these will expire with value. But the price you pay, you're often going to still be at a deficit if you run it up until expiration. Like I never let them expire unless like, I've already lost them completely, and I don't, no, I just don't care. Like, the money is gone. Um, but if they're making money, like, I'm selling them before the Friday they expire. 